Hey, hey, I'm James Brown, and this is Living With Pride, and let me tell you, I have a wonderful surprise for you. I have Amelia in the room with me, and she is the CEO, founder of, what is it? A Life for Seniors. That's the one. So, how did you decide that you wanted to create a business, A Life for Seniors? Well, it all started when I was younger. My grandpa was paralyzed. Um, so I kind of was thrown into the healthcare arena at a very young age. Um, so When you say thrown in, how were you thrown in? My parents were like, you need to go do volunteer hours at the nursing home down the street. So I spent weekends at the nursing home down the street doing volunteer hours. Um, so all of my kind of career since then have been in assisted living, um, nursing facilities, kind of all of the above. So. so you're a young woman who has this propensity to want to help people. Yep. So you got the bug bit you and you found yourself in the midst of all of these things and then all of a sudden you said, you know, this is something I can do. Yeah, yeah. So I started, um, started in skilled nursing, did that for a little while. Um, where my grandma had a stroke and then my uncle had cancer, so I really got to experience more of it. Um, and then I switched to assisted living because I really wanted to change the quality of life people had when they were coming to these right. different communities. Right. Uh, so I started in activities, then I did marketing, and then I was the executive director for the last few years of a couple different buildings. And then at that point, families would come in and ask me questions about you know our building and what they were going through and I kind of sensed a need for someone to help families find the places and navigate this so that's when I left and started a life for seniors so a life for seniors tell us about what it really is yeah so it's a consulting service basically where I meet with families or individuals that are being told or are recognizing that they need a higher level of care I sit down and I kind of learn, you know, what their needs are, what their preferences, budget, location, kind of the whole nine yards look like. And then I recommend communities that I think are in alignment with that. Um, from there, I'll set up tours of the buildings that I think are a good fit and I'll go tour the communities with the families because a lot of times no one prepares for this, right? It's always the story of, oh, I'm never going to need help or I'm right. always going to stay at home. So I like to go with families to help point out that there's more in these buildings than just the chandeliers that are hanging when they walk in. So I like to tell families the chandeliers look nice, but they don't provide care for your family member. So, you know, we every place is a little bit different. And so every family, you know, is going to have a different fit. So, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a real good statement because aesthetically, we look at things and we qualify that look mm -hmm. by how well the paint is, you know, what kind of carpet is on the floor, do they have a swimming pool, is yep. there a hot tub, and we believe that to be the essence of it's a good place. Exactly. A good place is made up of skilled people mm -hmm. who do their job do who know well. <laughs> and, and know what to do. Exactly. You go in and make sure that that is a real issue. Yep. Exactly. So, I mean, a lot of times families, like there are buildings that have the swimming pools and the hot tubs. Right. And I have these families that I'll talk to and I'm like, tell me about your mom, right? And they say, oh, she's, you know, not very social. She likes to stay in her room, you know, yada, yada, right. yada. But we want that building because it has yada, the pool. Yada, yada, yada. Right? Yes. And I'm like, why do you want the pool if your mom is one of those people that's never going to go use it, right? Wouldn't you rather have a place that is going to have the best care to go help your mom that never leaves her room because she's a fall risk or this, that, and the other? And I, the families are like, I never even thought of that. So you, you determine the placement of an individual not by the facility, but by the needs of the individual. Yep. Yeah, because everyone's so different. I mean, I met with a lady this morning who the son called me and it was because she was malnourished, right. right? Which is pretty common amongst older adults that are living at home because it's not a social thing to keep eating. It's harder to cook. You don't wanna clean. And it's one of those things that we don't really pay attention to. And his mom's landed in the hospital five times now because she's not eating well. Right. And now they need to find uh, you know, assisted living, but she's only 70. And you know, does she need to go somewhere where you walk in and everyone's asleep when you walk in the front door? Or does she need somewhere that's a little more vibrant and it's gonna pull her out of her room and really encourage her to start living again? And that's why Living With Pride is coming to you folks with prepared meals. We're going to, we're developing right now. We've got a chef in uh, Arizona or Nevada, where the heck he's at. I, I, what do I know? I, I mean, I know what Provo is, but uh, we've got a guy that's really 
top of the game. We're preparing menus and things like that. We're going to offer, but also we're going to be working to get this into a system, whether it's Costco or wherever, so that you can go get senior living, yep. living for seniors, you know, but living with pride meals that will help you easily put it in the refrigerator, put it in the oven, take it out, eat it, throw the pan away and be done with it, but have had your nourishment. And that's a real key thing. Now, you talk about this line of experts and steps that you take. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing happen? Just say I'm coming in to figure out where I want to go and what I want to do. And I mean, I need a place with a disco. Okay, okay. So the first step is me talking to you and you telling me that you need a place with a disco. That's what I'm talking and, about. And, um, you know, talking a little bit more about, you know, what does your budget look like? What's important to you? You know, are you a fall risk? Are you really social and you're only moving because you're sick of doing your laundry and the cooking and you just want a place to go with people to hang out with, right? right. Um, once we kind of discover what your actual need is, from there, I'm contracted with pretty much all of the buildings in the area, um, so I'll reach out to them and get current availability and pricing and you know, tell them a little bit about what you're looking for, make sure that they can accommodate it, and then I'll come back to you and say, here's the top four places that I think we start looking at. So how long does that take from the moment I walk into your office and say, help me, I'm just... Don't know what to do. I need a disco ball. Yeah, now, uh, I would say, you know, once we talk, I can usually have places back to you by the end of the day. So this morning, the family I was with, he called me at 10. We were touring at noon, and now mom is moving in on Friday. So, so. what makes you so efficient? I think um, I'm in and out of these buildings every single day, so it's really easy for me to call and get that information for you. Um, I have a really good relationship with these buildings, so they know if I'm calling, it's usually kind of time sensitive and instead of sending you out to all 20 places and saying let's go look at every single one that exists you know it's let's look at the top four I think you know one of these is gonna be the best place for you and then we can evaluate from there so you're not one of those kinds of persons just to looky look let's go look at all the places because part of that game is you're playing a game to the people who own mm -hmm. and manage the building making them think that you're really trying to get business for them yep. really you're trying to get business and do business with the people who need the facility the most 100 percent and I think so to go along with that so my service is completely free for families the way I get paid is by the communities so I'm contracted with all of them um, but I have it set up as a flat rate so a lot of the other kind of consulting companies that do what I do take a percentage and so they tend to have you know this like kind of background of let me steer you to a higher community because I can make more money from it I get the same amount of money depending on wherever you go. So for me, it, we don't need to go look at 12 buildings that cost $7,000. Let's go look at the ones that cost, you know, the 3,000 or whatever's in your budget and, you know, go from there. But this girl is smart. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of person you want to be talking to you if you are a family person of a senior, most importantly. Let's not worry about the seniors. Let's not think about the seniors who have to listen to this, but let's talk about the young people who have mothers, fathers, uncles, and cousins, and brothers who may be in this dilemma. It is time for you guys and girls to get a fix in your brain and understand that preparation is the key to successful living. Whether you start from high school all the way up, it is preparation, and we are talking about helping you prepare yourself to get into the room where you can be comfortable. One of the things that I've noticed about senior living situations is that people are unhappy and they're not prepared for getting older. They're not prepared for what happens to their minds and or their bodies when they get to an age where the body starts to retracting from what it has typically been used to. Now it's relying upon you more than you relying upon it to get it moving further down the line. And so we've got this wonderful, wonderful program of life for seniors. And really, it doesn't end here, it begins here. You have your mind, you have your heart, you have your passion, you have your memories. So here's a way that we can extend that. Find the right person, and we've done that. I'm 
trying to figure out where the shoulder is here, you know. Keep feeling, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we've done that. We've done it for you. And what we're going to be doing in these next episodes is bringing you more of this and specific information specific to your needs. So bear with us as we talk about living with pride, dealing with seniors, that we're going to give you the big picture and then we're gonna dice it up into small pieces so you can understand what it is. But most importantly, you can wrap it around your particular situation. And I think what she's talking about is a life for seniors is exactly what we mean when we say living with pride. We want you to have a better life and here's one way to do it. I want you to tell us your website all of that good stuff okay. so we can put that up on the screen. Yeah, so it's uh, alifeforseniors.com and the phone number is 801-656-4996 and that goes directly to my cell phone. So whenever you call, you get to talk to me. If I don't answer, it's usually because I'm with the family. So if you leave a message, I'll make sure to call you back. But I can, you know, it really comes down to a life for seniors, very similar with living with pride. The whole idea is finding the right place for you and helping you feel educated and prepared and you know calm about the whole situation because it's not something you can avoid. I'm thinking about going to Nevada. Mm -hmm. uh, going to be producing some TV shows there. Can you do the same thing in Nevada? If there starts to become a need in Nevada, I can do the thing in Nevada. So I can make it happen wherever it needs to happen. She, you know, she doesn't hesitate when I ask the question. She just, bam, slaps me upside the head and just goes, yeah, I can do anything Let's and do I it. can go anywhere. Well, that, that's kind of what we want to do because this podcast is going to be all over the country and we want to create a, a, a real alliance with a number of organizations. And, and I, when you talked about this, I figured, I bet she can. You're going to hear a lot from this young lady with us. Uh, let's talk about the most significant kind of facility people are looking for. In your roster of places, which kind of facility mostly is selected for people to go to? So I would say assisted livings. Um, so there's different types of senior living, right? Yeah. You have 55 and up communities, you have independent living, you have assisted livings, and you have memory cares. Right. Independent livings are great. Um, a lot of people though are kind of determining maybe not to fully move to independent livings just because the minute you start needing help, you kind of have to move again. Whereas if you move to assisted livings, you can live there completely independently and then you can kind of age in place. So that's kind of what I've seen be the most popular resource. Um, they do have CNAs and med techs on staff, but there's also, you can drive there, you know, you can, they provide your food for you, they do your laundry for you, so you can kind of go through and live your life without all the chores. Um, but it also helps kind of prevent the dementia happening earlier, you know, you're acclimated to your routine, you know the staff, you know your environment, you're not isolated. Um, I read something the other day that said that people that are isolated have a 50% higher chance of mortality than people that are not isolated. It just happens that much more quickly because you're not using any of your facilities throughout the day. You're just sitting there. So it's good to meet and talk and mm -hmm. interchange ideas and dream and, yeah. and most importantly to continue to dream. And I find a lot of the seniors just stop. I think that they, you know, there's this stigma of if I go there, like that's the end, right? And right. I think I, I talk to people now that they tell me, oh, my mom's grandma lived in a place and she's not going anywhere. And I'm like, well, how long ago did your mom's grandma, you know, live in a place? And, um, you know, over probably the last two or three years, these places are incredible. I mean, they kind of call them the cruise ship on land now mm -hmm. because they can do everything that you would get on a vacation in one space. And they can help you with as much or as little as you need. But even if you're, you know, I've had some people that say we want to do home care and right. home care is great, but it can be very expensive. And you basically are paying for someone to come and sit with your mom, but there's still not a lot of stimulation taking place. And even if you're not a social person and you move into a, a senior living community, right. you still have the staff coming in to take out your trash and to bring you waters and do just kind of daily checks on you that even if you're not that social butterfly that's going to be at every activity, 
you still have different people checking in on you and that you're building a relationship with. So there's a twofold benefit to finding a place for your mother, father, whomever it is, because you continue to live your life mm -hmm. and you could effectively contribute to their life yep. if you're out doing something that could effectively contribute to their life. Exactly. And I think a lot of times too, you know, the family relationship gets better because, right. you know, if I'm taking care of you all day, I'm stressed out because I'm worried that you're not, you know, right. doing well. You're irritated because you don't want to listen to me tell you what to do because, you know, you're the older one. You know, you have the wisdom, and you, right? All of the above. And you always hear, especially in the movies, movies, I've been taking care of mom mm -hmm. and dad while you are doing blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It always creates that friction. Mm -hmm. If you get someone to take care of visiting your parents or whoever, it, it makes it a wonderful experience rather than... Oh, I gotta go do There's this. no resentment, right? Exactly. You get that relationship again exactly. where it's like we get to go to dinner or just go visit each other. It's not me telling you what to do and you being annoyed that all of a sudden the roles have reversed. And I think a lot of people, I would say probably, I would say almost every family I've worked with um, in all of my years have always said, why did we not do this sooner? Right. right? There's usually, you know, like a two to four week acclimation period where everyone's irritated that this, you know, had to occur. And then the conversation is, you know, this is amazing. Why did we not do this sooner? Right. And I think the people that don't say that are the ones that didn't prepare that, you know, mom fell, broke a hip, went to rehab. Rehab says you have three days to find a place because she's discharging on Friday and you're working, you don't know where to start you know, you don't use a service like me and you walk into a building and you're like, it has chandeliers, I'll take this one. Mom gets there and she hates the food and that's the only thing she lives for anymore, right? And you know, she's miserable. And I think that's why planning is so important because you know, have that conversation so that your parents can be involved in where they want to go or you know what's important to them or what's not and you know what the money looks like. And you know, if you don't have long-term care, you've considered it because it can definitely be pricey and do you ever run into, and I, I would imagine you, you you would, a situation where the children are really trying to get rid of mom and dad, mm -hmm. and it is it has absolutely nothing to do with their care yep. or what they're going to receive from being placed in, and do you find yourself having to maneuver around what you sense is a let's get rid of them, let's put them in a house and we don't have to deal with it anymore. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that kind of thing? What's your sensibility with dealing with people who have that kind of mindset? Yeah, so a lot of times um, what I've noticed is the people that do have the mentality of let's get rid of them, it's right. either because one, they have a sibling that's living with mom and dad that right. they feel is taking all the money and is doing nothing and is just manipulating the situation. And so just to kind of be done dealing with it all, the kind of key is to move mom and dad to get rid of the, the problem, which is the right. kids. Um, I think a lot of it though, I take a lot of time to kind of just understand the situation, right? And kind of point out the pros and cons. If, if it's something where, you know, there's a neglect situation happening or things like that, there's obviously resources we can reach out to. But I think once they get talking and understanding the opportunities, and you know, I like to loop mom and dad in if they're one of those families that you know, they're willing or they're open to talk because it's important to hear what, you know, is important to them. Um, so it really is just kind of case by case, you know, you just kind of have to feel out So you family. really take over, not necessarily over, but you take over in the sense that you're now wanting to make sure that that mother, father, or whomever it is that you're placing into a situation has a sense of value to themselves. Mm -hmm. They're the ones living there, so it's important to kind of know that they're okay with it or that it's set up so that they will be okay Say with it. Say that again. I said they are the ones living there. No, not the way. No. The, the, you, had that, you had a mouth movement, you know. Oh, okay. they're, the Man, they're the ones living like, there. I'm so cocky, I don't know what to do with myself <laughs> here, you know what I mean? That's what that came across. I, I am so refreshed in speaking with you. Uh, the enlightenment. The, the aura around you, your spirit resonates through this, and I just can't imagine anybody else doing what you do. Yeah, it's been neat. There, there are a couple of companies that do what I do. Um, 
but they don't have you. They don't. They don't have the same personal touch, and I think that's something families. It's funny because most families I work with have asked me to become part of the family. So I now have like eight different parents, and you know, a lot of different that's grandparents, a cool thing. and been invited to family reunions yeah. and things like that. And I show up, and half the kids are like, "Who is this lady?" Right? And I'm right. like, "Oh, hi, nice to meet you." You know, but um, I think that it just is that genuine. I've seen my parents go through it, I've seen enough families go through it that I really just want to help make the process easier. And I think a lot of these other people, they want it for the paycheck, which is why you know they don't look at all the communities and they don't take the time, but yeah. Is Utah a good community for senior living, senior development? Yeah. Isn't that something to be taught, a senior development? Then, yeah. But that's exactly what it is. I think Utah, is great because it's very competitive right and so the buildings don't necessarily like it because there's a building on every block that they're competing with but sometimes when i have families you know looking at like let's say like park city versus salt lake i'll tell the family I would almost push Salt Lake because it's so competitive down here that it's pushing these buildings to do better and do offer better, better services better. and do the best care right. and you know have the best food and you know do the things that are really important because some of these ones where there's no competition they're like 10 years behind and no one you know doesn't matter because no one's challenging them. Yeah and I, I've noticed that in as we visited a, a number of different locations and sometimes the management is this I'm so in control mm -hmm. uh, you know I've got these pedestal, yeah, exactly, and and you have to think for a minute. Some of these people are in position that they weren't in position in their regular lives, and now yep. they're managing these facilities. Mm -hmm. They get to control the world, so to speak. Yep, and it's it's a sad thing. What is the most important thing for you with your clients? I think communication. Um, because I can't find them the right fit if I don't really know what's going on. I think my, my end goal for my clients is really to find a place where they can continue living, that they don't feel like they're getting stuck somewhere and like locked in the closet and they can never see daylight again. You know, I want to know what's important, you know, is food important or care, you know, is it the care that's important? Where are you going to succeed? And I want to communicate with them about it. I try to, um, you know, go visit people afterwards to make sure that they feel like they still have that line. You know, if you have a problem. Do you have children? I don't. No. You're going to have children? Maybe one day. I have a dog. He's kind of like a child. He's very needy. He thinks he's a person. Isn't he? Yeah. He's one of those. Obviously, the other side of the coin is that she's got a pet dog. What type of dog is it? He's a cockapoo. Oh my goodness, one of them little dogs that you gotta nurture and... No, he thinks he is like a person. I kid you not. He stands on his hind legs and everything. He's like, here I am. Would you bring him the next time we do this? Yes, he'll be a fan. He's kind of like the neighborhood mascot, I would say. All the kids come over and play in my yard. I don't even have kids and I open the door and everyone's playing there after school. I'm like, they're like, hey Teddy. It's pretty entertaining. So I feel like I have kids because I have everyone else's kids at my house all the time. This is living with pride and this is a life for seniors a love for seniors a goal for seniors i'm gonna steal these from you a wish for seniors hope someone's writing them down <laughs> we are recording this okay good <laughs> just so you'll get yeah. that point. we knew she was swift but the swift passed over that point yeah. ladies and gentlemen this is a, you know, I want you and I'm welcoming you and inviting you to become a regular with us. We're going to talk about that because I think you've got the spirit and you can deal with other issues relative to being mature and senior. But I think what I like most importantly about you is that you're full of vigor and vinegar as the older people say. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, our head guy over there, you know, <laughs> he says things like that. He's looking away, yeah. <laughs> but, but such a warm spirit and a passion comes out, and I look into your eyes, powder blue, and it just resonates with I care, and that is so important. And if there's anything that we're going to do with and through this show, is to demonstrate that we care. But we're also going to give the seniors an opportunity to show how much they care, how much they've contributed to this world, to this life, to this community, so that you out there who forget 
the fact that one day you're going to be one of these persons that we're talking about. And so we want to let you know that now's the time to start thinking about it, doing something about it, and being about it. Because it's not only your mother and father, it will one day be you. And you had better hope that there's an Amelia around. That's what I'm talking about. This is Living With Pride. I'm James Brown, and this is our new sidekick. And I'm going to let her tell mm -hmm. you who she is, what she is, and where she is. My name is Amelia Larson. I am based in Salt Lake area. Um, I grew up in Logan, but my passion is making sure that, you know, people are taken care of and kind of like what James just said, I think a big thing I tell the families is if there's anything you can learn through this stressful experience of finding a place for your parents is to make a plan for yourself, you know, financially and talk with your family about what's important and get things lined up and understand, you know, how it works because I would say 90% of the people I work with always say, oh, you know, we're never going to need it or they're never going to have to go somewhere. And then there's that panicked phone call of we need it like as soon as possible. Right. And I think that the experience can be so different for people if they just took, you know, an hour to just sit down and say, what's important? Where do you want to go? Why don't you want to go there? You know, what do you want me to look for? And, you know, can I include you? And I have a lot of families, too, where they say, oh, we're, we need it a year from now. And I'm like, well, what's the harm in looking now, right? That way, if something happens in the next year, switch, click you the know, switch and you'll right? Be there. And you were a part of it, you know? And um, it's hard for people. I think it's a very hard conversation to have. And I think if people can start having it more from the educational standpoint of, I want to know so we can do this the best way we can, instead of the, I want to know because I'm going to stick you there. Um, I think that it will be interpreted a lot differently by families, but I think it's the best thing you can do is to talk about it and, you know, use resources like, you know, the show and, and understand, you know, ask the questions and get the answers. I mean, I think a lot of people think that they're the only ones going through this situation and that it's a dumb question. But, you know, I, I talk to families and they're like, you can't believe this. And I'm like, I wish I couldn't, right? But, you know, you and the last six families I talked to are doing the exact same thing. And I think there's a huge community out there. And hopefully this show can bring people together to understand, you know, it's not just them. And you have people to talk to and you have resources. So use them. Whoa. This show is brought to you in part by the Utah Nonprofit housing corporation which is a very formidable eye care organization so if you're looking for senior living you could go to utah nonprofit uh corporate housing corporation and they will help you uh amelia it's a joy it's a pleasure uh i am so excited that randy our consummate expert uh, has introduced us to you and you to us uh, we're going to build a wonderful foundation and I appreciate what you're doing please don't stop uh, and let's get better we're going to do this across the country let's do it <laughs> the girl got chutzpah. That's what my Jewish friends would call. She got chutzpah up in the house. I'm James Brown. I'm your host and I'm living with pride and I want you to as well.